Here we go. Here. <laughs> Here we go. We know that the church at Philippi was having a fight. Every church fight is complicated by many competing interests. Think about Paul's words in Philippians chapter 1 verses 15 through 18. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been put here in the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in every way, whether out of false motives or true, and in that I rejoice. Even though Paul doesn't name any names here, he sees different sides in the conflict. There are those who carry forth the conflict to prosecute their own agendas. There are those who have the best of intentions, but are still in the fight. Paul seeks to get beyond the sides of the conflict and to focus on the main purpose of the Christian movement. What is the point of it all, he asks. The Christians, Paul urges, to proclaim Christ in every way. He longs for them to stay focused on the goal and not to allow their differences to become the focus of their life together. Well, my friends, this is good counsel for any congregation, any time, any place. One of the best ways to analyze a congregational conflict was developed by Speed Lees, a longtime consultant with the Alban Institute. I want to share with you his insights on what he calls the levels of conflict in a congregation's life. Lees wants to help churches get refocused on what really matters, on proclaiming Christ in every way. Lees notes that the two key identifying characteristics of each level of conflict are the party's objectives and their use of language. We will want to watch for these two key identifying characteristics at every level of conflict, and we'll be well served to pay attention to these characteristics in our own conduct and speech in our congregation. Lees identifies level one as problems to solve. This level has to do with real disagreement Conflicting goals, he writes, values, needs, actions, plans, or information. This kind of disagreement is common in the life of a congregation. It is necessary for constructive progress, growth, change, and relationship building. In fact, if there is not some low-level dissatisfaction in a congregation, perhaps between 5 and 15 percent of the congregational membership. If there's not some of that dissatisfaction and discontent at all times, the congregation will likely become a living fossil 
or a happy social club. What our bishop might call a country club with a cross on top. The goal of a level one conflict is to fix the problem or solve the disagreement. This level is not about people, relationships, or personalities. If good face-to-face -face communication happens here, the conflict is resolved and people move on to the next issue or opportunity in their life together. Level two is identified as disagreement. Lees writes that in level two, their objectives changed. To being less concerned with the problem to solve than they are with protecting themselves. The value of personal preference begins to operate at a low level here. The various parties will probably find themselves calling on friends to discuss the problems and ask for advice, Speedlees says. We can see the beginnings of conflict here. Secondhand communication becomes the practice. Factions may start to develop. Lees observes that perhaps one will begin to plan strategies for how to deal with the conflict when it is next expressed in a meeting or a relationship. At this level, the problem is described more in terms of generalities and less in terms of issues. People say things like, we have a communication problem. We need to trust each other more. We have to be more Christ-like. What would Jesus do? People are unwilling and or unable to identify specific problems or to solve or address the issues. Behind each of these generalizations, Speedlees writes, is likely to be found a specific factual happening. But those involved in the conflict are distancing themselves from their reality and from each other by generalizing about it. Lee observes, fear begins to displace courage at this level. Facts become less important than feelings. Dark humor about congregational leaders and other congregational members emerges at this point. This is the beginning of a process of demonizing the opponent or opponents. What I mean to describe, Lees writes, is the barbed, distancing jibe that does nothing to relieve tension, but puts down or derides the other and what she or he believes to be important. When this kind of humor ceases to be innocent and starts to veil some threatening thoughts, then the conflict has changed its character completely. Things change drastically at level three. Lees labels this level as contest. This is the classic win-lose perspective on conflict that seems to infect our whole culture these days. This level shifts the conflict toward destructive potential. At this point, Lees writes, what is important is not hurting or getting rid of one's opponent, but rather winning. Groups begin to 